Yes, folks, it's very early in the morning. It's 2.30 in the morning on June 1st, 2024. And you can try to put all the lipstick you can on this pig, but it doesn't change the situation. The story that we heard of a massive turnout in South Africa's election is appearing to be nothing but a red herring. The voter turnout is still listed at just 58.52%. And that has presented a total disaster for political parties in South Africa. With 95% of the vote in at this hour, and I'm doing this before the vote goes to 100 in case I get a nap here and wake up and it's 100%. 95% of the vote in, and there's only one real winner in this race, and that's MK Party, Jacob Zuma's renegade, rebel, new kids on the block, and Kwantui Sizwe Party, which has increased its percentage throughout the vote count. When we first started seeing numbers, they were around 7% below the EFF. They eased up past the EFF, 9, 9.5, and, and they left them the dust, 10, 10.5, 11, 11.5, 12, 12.5. As today progressed, they went from 10.5 to now 14.3% of the vote total, 2,094,444 votes at MK. Wow. Now, a lot of intentions being focused on the African National Congress. And remember my projection, my prediction from November of 2021, which I stood by, and not backed off of, was that the ANC would be between 38 and 42 percent. Now, that was before the misery of 300 days of load shedding last year and the formation of the MK party. But at this hour, the African National Congress has failed to get 6 million votes, giving them just 40.69 percent of the electorate. 40.69 percent. This isn't a disaster. This is calamity for the African National Congress. This is a disaster of epic proportions. And a real leader of a political party would resign over this abject failure. This is a disaster. Will Ramaphosa be gone? I'm sure a lot of people like to see the backside of this guy as he walks out of the room. But I don't know. It's South African politics. Meanwhile, the Democratic Alliance has escaped, escaped a lot of scrutiny thus far. But their numbers continue to decline as well. The Democratic Alliance is barely above where they were percentage-wise last time. And as far as vote totals... They're not even close to that. The Democratic Alliance at this hour has 3,151,049 votes. The last time out, they had 3.6 million. They've lost half a million voters. And unlike the 2019 election, they didn't lose those voters to the Freedom Front Plus. The Freedom Front Plus also cratered. They have lost significant support too. People did not come out and vote. We heard endlessly about how the turnout was high. Apparently, that's a crock. Either that or there are truckloads full of boxes, of ballots that have yet to be counted that we're not accounting for, something doesn't smell right here. And what doesn't smell right here is the IEC must have misled us by telling us that there was a record turnout or a high turnout. But it seems to have a lot more to do with the incompetence of the Independent Electoral Commission not having sufficient tablets or well-trained staff at each location. And it made it appear as if the voter turnout was higher than normal. Wow. Because at this hour, this is unbelievable. The ANC, in the past three elections, in 2019, they got 10.5 million votes, 10.6. In 2014, they got 11.4 million. In 2009, they got 11.6 million. At this hour, they don't even have 6 million votes. So never mind the fact that they had 57% of the popular vote last time, and now they're at 40, they've lost 17% of the vote. They've also lost four and a half million voters. And people say it's because of the MK. Well, the MK only picked up two million. Even if they picked up all ANC voters, which wasn't the case because they cleaned the EFF's clock, they've got at least half a million of their voters, that doesn't account for the loss of four million voters. That only accounts for the loss of a million and a half. And what if the DA, the two election cycles ago, had four million, five thousand voters? Now they're down to three million, one hundred fifty-one thousand. This is a huge trouble. 25% of the people who previously voted, they're not gone. The population is larger. What is going on? Let's take a look at some select parties here before we wrap up this late night analysis. Uh, MK, we already covered. EFF, last election 1.8 million votes. This time, 1.4 million votes. And they're down to 9.44% of the vote total. The Patriotic Alliance, excuse me, in kind of Freedom Party, which has been floating with irrelevance, has picked up some percentages, but their vote totals are still down. 
they are 576,000, which is just under 4%, which makes them a player in this race. The Patriotic Alliance, which received just 6,600 votes in 2019, has 302,789 with 2% of the vote, down significantly from the previous count, the percentage-wise, but their numbers have gone up. So they'll still be a player. The Freedom Front Plus has 200,231 votes. That's 1.37% of the electorate. That is down from 440,000. They have lost over half of the total I had last time. Action SA, very disappointing for Herman Mishaba, no doubt, with just 169,000. The African Christian Democratic Party, Reverend Kenneth Mishwe, just 87,000. The United Democratic Movement under Bantu Holomisa, just 72,000. The Vanity Projects of Rise Mzanzi, 59,000. And Bosa from Musi Maimani, 58,000. And it's not very pretty. Good party. Tani Pat, Patricia DeLille, the self-proclaimed leader of the Cape Colored Community. 20, was it 28,000? 28,000 votes. Wow. Wow. Folks, that represents 0.19% of the electorate. Not even one-fifth of 1%. Does this finally end the conversation with Patricia Lill? Does Patricia Lill leave politics? Does John Steenheiser resign? Does Cyril Pomposa leave politics? And what of Julius Malema, whose epic failure is in place here too? This should lead to a dramatic shakeup in the leadership of political parties across South Africa. And we're left with a mess everywhere, except in the Western Cape, where it's clear that the Democratic Alliance will rule. And in places like Mpumalanga, where the ANC just got over the 50% threshold, and in Northwest, where they have the, the lead, and the Eastern Cape. The rest of the country, we're going to see wild coalitions. In Gauteng, where the ANC didn't get enough to lead there, and the Democratic Alliance didn't reach 30%. Whew, this is a mess. Where did the voters go? Why were we told repeatedly throughout the day that this was a huge turnout? It looks as if 58%, 59% is the turnout. That's not huge. And that boded, poor, that boded poorly. Boded? <laughs> I said before the election that bodes poorly for the ANC. Can you say boded? Anyway, it portends an ill win for the ANC. And that's exactly what's happened here. The ANC has shed voters like viral particles during the Rona. What are you going to call it? Scandal? <laughs> Scam? During the lockdown, they have shed voters like viral particles. It's unbelievable. They've lost 4 million voters. Ladies and gentlemen, that means if you include women and children, the disabled, those unable to vote, that less than 1 in 10 South Africans voted for the ANC in this election. I'm not talking about eligible voters. I'm not talking about registered voters. 1 in 10. And if you go by registered voters, there's 27 million registered voters. They got 6 million votes. Not even. That's not even, <laughs> even a quarter of the votes. And this is the party that claims to be the party of liberation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a bumpy ride for South Africans going forward. They have just a couple weeks to form a government. Now, bear in mind that the ANC can form a minority government, not a majority, but getting their president passed, getting something selected is going to be very difficult. So the bottom line here, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. And it's going to be a bumpy road ahead. So we'll see what happens. There's a very real possibility. There was a news report earlier today from Independent Line that the federal chairperson of the Democratic Alliance, Helen Zilla, despite the comments of John Steenhuisen previously that day and the day prior that there would be no coalition with the ANC, has said that there is a possibility of a coalition with the ANC. If so, the only way this works without voters just dropping the DA in future is that the multi-party charter comes together and agrees that the, for the good of the nation that the charter, which was formed to oust the ANC, must come together and form a coalition, a grand coalition, a grand alliance to govern the country which would mean most likely that the smart move would be that the president would not come from the top three parties, and MK wouldn't be part of it anyway, but it wouldn't be an ANC, wouldn't be a DA president, but more likely a moderate, mature individual like Valenconcini Kilapisa from the, 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 the Kata Freedom Party becomes the president, and key ministries are divided between the ANC, the DA, with some ministries given responsibility to some of the minor players in that coalition, and they govern for the good of the country. Not an ideal outcome, but a potential path forward. We shall see. I covered this in the Grand Coalition scenario of my video I did on coalitions, potential 
coalitions about two months ago. Anyway, folks, it's uh, moving towards 3 a.m. I'm going to wrap it up here. We'll get back with you tomorrow and tell you the final results if they're available. Oh, 